These villages lie scattered in the beautiful landscape of southern Anhui. Ancient houses with whitewashed walls and black tiles stand well arranged on this exquisite terrain. The centuries-old buildings still retain their elegance and warmth. They linger in the narrow blue stone lanes and seem to hover in the gray white air. This landscape is as clear as ever before, with people still living in these centuries old buildings. Like a poem learned years ago, it can take away the memory of the present and the past. When gazing through the waters of time, one sees a picture out of history, solidified by its age, a lonely oriental dream. Xidi and Hongchun villages are located in Yi County in China's Anhui province, just 300 kilometers from Shanghai. Like other ancient villages in southern Anhui, Xidi and Hongchun villages retain the original appearances they had when they were originally built centuries ago, preserved by the endless mountains and remote terrain. Shidi village retains 124 intact Ming and Qing residential buildings and three ancestral halls. Hongtsun village has 158, including 137 well-preserved ancient buildings of the Ming and Qing dynasties. They are examples of a mature architectural school of late ancient Chinese society Anhui-style architecture. In the Ming and Qing dynasties, businessmen around Anhui's Huizhou dominated commerce for as long as two or three hundred years, with monopolies in timber, tea and salt, and were collectively referred to as Anhui businessmen. At that time, they had operations all over the country, 
accumulating a great amount of wealth and prestige. The tendency of Chinese people to return to their roots made the Anhui businessmen eventually choose to undertake massive construction projects and continue their family lines in their own hometowns. Their economic prosperity brought about a rich Anhui-style architecture. The Hu family of Shidi village shaped this landscape with their own intricate story. In 904, Emperor Zhao Zong of Tang fled Chang'an due to war, and his empress gave birth to a baby boy while on the road. Hu San, an official in Shanxi, secretly brought the prince back to his hometown, Huizhou, and endured much suffering to raise the child, renaming him Hu Changyi. Since then, a branch of the royal Li family settled down here. Hu Changyi was the ancestor of the Hu family in Shidi village. Over the following thousand years, later generations of the Hu clan clung to this land with a spirit of farming and studying inherited like the mountains and waters. Emperor Tai Zong of Tang is still enshrined in the Hall of Renaissance in Shidi village as their distant ancestor. The migration of a distinguished family from the central plains brought out not only advanced productive forces, but also the advanced culture and rituals of farming and studying. The Confucian culture prevailing in the central plains took root and flourished in southern Anhui. The owner of Lu Fu Hall is a well-known collector in Shidi village. In his living room hangs a Chinese couplet. The first line means learning is good, doing business is good, but to be successful at either is best. The second line means nothing is difficult if we know how to start a business and keep it running. Under the influence of Confucianism, the Huizhou people attach great importance to culture and education. In ancient Huizhou villages, studying became popular. Regardless of origin, people believe that the best habit in the world is studying. There were 54 academies in Huizhou during the Kangxi reign of the Qing dynasty. Among the successful candidates of the National Imperial Examination, Huizhou ranked first and produced 19 first place scholars in the Qing dynasty alone. To the Anhui businessmen influenced by Confucianism, they should uphold their family honor after becoming rich and powerful. Almost all the Anhui businessmen, with their accumulation of enormous wealth, invested large amounts of capital into the construction of their homes.
Anhui-style architecture is significantly different from other residential buildings in China. White and black are the only two colors used. The white walls are modeled and are not set in strong contrast against the black tiles, although from a distance of dozens of miles away, we still can see the elegance of the buildings of Shidi village against the dark blue background as if in a fairyland. In the village, the high horse head walls, also known as fire seals, help people to understand the past glory of these old houses. Huizhou people gave this horse head shape to ordinary white walls. This shape is fused into the family architectural complex, seemingly leading the walls in pride or arrogance to rush forward and leap to the sky. The horses gallop quickly and grandly. In these residential houses, something is particularly striking. A rectangular sky is exposed at the junction of the horsehead walls and roofs, which is an important feature of Anhui-style patios. Patios provide not only sufficient light and air circulation to the house, but also a room for people to share. People sitting in the halls may enjoy day and night views here. It's open and clear and is the most attractive part of the whole building. The internal complexity and delicacy of these old houses is in contrast with the external simplicity and purity. Anhui-style architecture pays meticulous attention to renovation. Wood carving, brick carving, and stone carving in Anhui-style architecture are well reflected here. Exquisite sculptures represent the blessings and hopes of the Huizhou people for a better life. Buildings of southern Anhui reveal the characteristics of a combination of Confucianism and commercial interest. The scholarly atmosphere and stately construction complement each other in Anhui-style architecture, reflecting a unique fusion of business and The idea upholding hall, built in 1855, is the residence of Wang Dingwei, salt tycoon of the late Qing dynasty. It is the most magnificent and beautiful representative work in the Hongtsun residential buildings and is still well preserved today. Idea Upholding Hall is part of a brick wood structure covering an area of 2100 square meters. It can be divided into three sections along its central axis. The front courtyard is a patio and both the middle and the rear consist of three rooms. There is a smoking room, a mahjong room, stables, a kitchen, maid rooms and cloisters, 
and various other rooms on the left and right sides of the three sections. IDEA Upholding Hall features 136 poles, nine patios, seven... The rippling lake to the south of Hong Tsun village is called the South Lake. When did this vast fertile farmland become a lake? Why did the Hong Tsun people abandon the land and modify the natural environment? Was it in pursuit of the lake's glittering beauty? Some 800 years ago, during the Southern Song Dynasty, the ancestor of the Hong Tsun people passed by this place. He was named Wang of the Jinling clan. Here he found a valley with an excellent terrain surrounded by woods and streams and he decided to build several houses at the foot of the mountain. A few years later, the river at the foot of the mountain was diverted during a period of protracted rainfall and began to flow into another stream. The whole village then fronted the water with hills to the rear. The change in the river overjoyed the Wang clan. This new terrain was a heaven-sent opportunity for the development of the village by a people who both advocated and were proficient in the art of feng shui. The most famous feng shui writings of ancient China describe the ideal residence. A dwelling place with the azure dragon on the left, the white tiger on the right, the vermilion bird at the front, and the black tortoise at the back is most expensive. This meant a home with a steady stream of water on the left, a smooth road on the right, flowing water in the front, and rolling hills at the back was the most unique place to live. Water represents yin, mountains represent yang, and so the terrain of Hong Tsun village is perfectly in line with the ideal standard of feng shui for residential location. One day in the late autumn during the Ming Dynasty, a middle-aged man arrived in Hong Tsun village and looked at the distant village from the mountain. This was He Ke Da, a feng shui expert, who was hired by the Wang clan to do the overall planning for the village's transformation. It took He Ke Da a decade to finally identify that the feng shui situation of the village took the form of resting cattle. How could he best make use of it? However, life in Hong Tsun village did not show much improvement. After some careful reflection and re-examination, He Ke Da decided that the construction of the ox-shaped village had been correct, but the problem was that as cattle are ruminants, there should be two stomachs. Therefore, he changed several hectares of fertile land south of the village into the South Lake. The water of the Lunar Palace flowed into the South Lake, making it the second stomach. Over the next few hundred years, accompanied by the rippling Lunar Palace and the South Lake, Hong Tsun's existence blossomed. The enormously wealthy Anhui businessmen and the first place scholars well known throughout China seem to be the best evidence 
of the feng shui effect. Today, this cattle has been leisurely lying here for a few hundred years. It centers on the Lunar Palace, surrounded by the residences and ancestral halls. The clear water of the Yong River flows through the pond, passing by the front of every house and then flowing into the South Lake. The water system also makes use of the gap in the natural terrain so that the water is constantly flowing. For centuries, the villagers have enjoyed a steady stream of water for production, living, and fire control. In addition to the site selection, the concept of feng shui continue to be reflected in the residential details of Anhui-style architecture. Most residential halls in Shidi village were designed as patios surrounded by a cloister on four sides, which helps the rainwater to flow into the patio. Water represents wealth. It conforms to the interpretation of Chinese feng shui and also reflects the Anhui business philosophy of not letting one's water flow into another's field. The patios are also relatively small in strict accordance with the requirements of feng shui because wide patios would let the good luck escape. Many people in Hong Tsun village turn their gate towards the water flowing through the village in order to attract wealth according to the principles of feng shui. In ancient Anhui villages, there are always several solemn-looking buildings standing significantly higher than the other houses, magnificent in shape and rigid in structure. This is the ancestral hall where Chinese people enshrine and worship their ancestral tablets. The ancestral hall is the most sacred building in a village. The Hall of Respect is the ancestral hall of the Hu family in Shidi village. From the gate, the hall reveals a majestic interior. It is the place for the collective worship of the Hu descendants. The Anhui businessmen away from home could never forget their homeland and the ancestral hall was their eternal link to the past. In Huizhou, the most enduring concept of the hometown is the clan. The most sacred pilgrimage is that of ancestor worship. The powerful clans promoted the development of the Anhui businessmen. They gradually monopolized the timber, tea, silk, and salt trades, and finally gave rise to a situation where Anhui businessmen dominated China for hundreds of years. Anhui businessmen, deeply influenced by Confucianism, had a natural intimacy with public officials. Due to the imperial official system, clan ties with the court provided political patronage for their trade monopolies, especially in salt. Anhui businessmen engaged in the tea, salt, and wood businesses made friends with a large number of public officials. They reached great success because of this state-operated business model, but it was also their downfall. In the late Qing, the Anhui businessmen declined along with the feudal dynasty, and the development of ancient villages in southern Anhui came to a full stop in tandem with the businessmen's decline. But with their capital cut off, the architectural complexes of the Ming and Qing villages have been completely preserved and have quietly remained as they were on this fantastic landscape.
Such wonderful villages are like a dream. They represent a simple life floating on a river of time, passing by their homes, a quiet life of farming and harvesting.